Ladies and gentlemen, you clicked on the video, you know what this is about, so let's just get straight into it. Have you ever, ever, ever bothered to considering what it takes for some artist to sit down and go from nothing to a song on Spotify? Of course you haven't. Why would you? That's why I'm here to teach you. Let's go. So first off, when it comes to my process with how I go about creating a song, I start off by searching for a beat on YouTube. I would like to perform, um, not perform, sorry, produce a lot of my music, but I don't really have the skill set for it. Not to mention as well that producers are expensive. So um, I go on YouTube and I tend to look for a beat that is on YouTube first and I will usually look for a beat on YouTube that matches my mood so let's say for example that I'm in a happy mood then I will look for happy up, up tempo type beats if I'm a little bit sad then I'll look for sad beats um, let's say for example that I feel kind of weird I'll look for something like a good morning Tokyo uh, or a Tokyo's revenge type beat, so I can just get into the weird side of things um, but if I'm trying to be super super lyrical that day then I might look for maybe like a Jack Hard type beat or a join the lucas type beat you know i want to go for something that's old school boom bath and i really want to just spit some really conscious stuff then i might look for um a corday type beat or just an old boom bap type beat um so depending on my mood that is how i will find my beat but what i go with is my mood not a subject so i don't really know what i'm gonna write about I just know the type of thing I want to write about, if that makes a little bit of sense. But then from there, we go from deciding on a beat to then vibing with it. And I'll be listening to all these different beats and I'm vibing and stuff. So let's say there's a beat that is, you know, boom, ka, boom, 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 ka. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll do something like that where I'm kind of just vibing, trying to catch the beat, go with it, that, yeah, that, and I'll just be making up random words or random flows and rhythms and just playing around with it. So it can go. So I play around with all sorts of ways that it goes ups and downs, highs, lows, lefts, and rights, ups and downs, twists, blah, 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 blah. Until then, I start getting the idea of what I want to rap about. And then, boom, I put some words to the flows and I will go. And that is then just the songwriting process. Now, for me personally, I go by what the beat gives me. So, if it is a hook first in the song, then chances are I'll write the hook first. But I do have a preference for writing verses first um, because hooks are something that I've always kind of sort of struggled with. And so I like to leave them to last as I grow and develop in my ability to write hooks. Um, otherwise, if even if there are spaces for a hook, sometimes I'm like, forget about it. And I'll just write and write and write and just low on that thing from beginning to end um but the songwriting process i always tailor my lyrics to the beat um, by that point i would have come up with a concept i would have matched the mood that i'm feeling and then it's just a case of writing the stuff out there i know that a few people have different ways of writing lyrics as well so for example um some people like to get the words and the rhyming words first and then fill in a bar to match that rhyming word which can stretch your creativity i've tried it once and it was actually pretty cool to see um, ways of being able to navigate from this word to that word and try to make it all make sense um, but I don't typically write like that I kind of just write as as it comes so maybe if I'm like um, your boy AD is a is a really big monster um, uh, then I might go with like uh, your boy AD is a really big monster try to catch me out no fake imposter like something like that you know I'll just go like that I didn't know that I was gonna go to imposter um, but I just went with it as I went along you know um, so I'll write my whole songs like that so I've got the beat I've got the concept I've written lyrics to it now it is time to 
record. Now, I personally don't record in my room as much as I used to, simply because, you know, the quality is not as high. Not to say that it's bad, but it could be better. So I tend to record either with my boy Nima G or as of lately, the last few months, because it's free for me, um, I will record at Sappho Music Studios as part of the artist development course that I'm on. Um, so a lot of my songs, I, as within the last year basically, have been recorded at Sappho Music. Um, and those are all due to be coming out as and when they basically roll out throughout the year. Um, but otherwise, a lot of the other songs that you guys will hear will have come from me recording with Nina G. Um, because also at these different places, they also have something else available to me, uh, which is the next part of this thing, which is the mixing and mastering. So I'll go to the studio or I'll be in my room, I'll lay down my lyrics, bada bing, bada boom. I'm pretty good with recording my lyrics, so I'm kind of like a you know one shot, go in, do my thing, and then boom, I'm out. It, it, I don't tend to take a lot of tries to nail my performance because I would have practiced it so rigorously um, when writing the lyrics that by the time I go into the booth, I basically know my stuff. That's not to say that I know it off by, my, by heart, but I definitely know how I'm meant to rap this stuff, no matter how crazy or intricate it is. So that way I'm not really messing up when I get into the booth, I just go in and kill it, boom. So I'll go in, do my lyrics, and then it's time for the mixing and the mastering. Um, so mixing and mastering is basically, well, this, this is what Matthew at Suffer Music Studios told me. He said that if you do the mixing right, then you have no need for mastering because it's effortless at that point. Like it's a very, very simple thing. So the mixing of a song is where you clean up everything and you add all the different effects and you make sure that the levels are all right and stuff. Um, so that you wanna make sure that everything is sitting right in the mix with regards to like the frequencies and stuff and the balance of everything. So that's mixing, you know, and that's where you get to put all the crazy effects on like, you know, your auto tunes and your, compression and your EQ and reverb and panning and distortion and delay and all other sorts of stuff um, to make the song sound cool. And then mastering is like the final touches on it. It's like the Salt Bay sprinkle on top of the song. And that is the little bit of polish that takes the song from being basically really, really good to perfect. That's what makes it radio ready and that's what makes it um, you know, just essentially ready for the consumers. So a mastering engineer will listen to what the mix engineer has done and just basically make sure that it's all correct. They're kind of like the proofreader for the song. And if anything needs tweaking, then that's what they'll do. And they'll spend time making sure that they absolutely fine tune and refine everything to make sure that the song now sits perfectly. Um, so that is, uh, and, and you need to have your ears trained to be um, uh, you know, to be able to mix and master songs. So that is why I'm saying that I go to Sappho Music and I go to Nima G because not only will they record me with better equipment than what I own, but then they'll also, um, through connections that I have over there, they'll mix my songs, they'll master my songs and make sure that my songs are basically sounding a lot better than if I was to try taking care of them myself because I'll be honest, I ain't got my ears trained to be able to do that sort of stuff. It takes years and years of devotion and training your ears to be able to do the mix and master in the way you're meant to because you're meant to listen to things and stuff that other people don't necessarily hear and then just tweak it all to make it sound nice and you need to have a higher understanding of those things so that when you then make those changes people who listen to that stuff don't understand what you've done but they just know that it sounds nice but i've now gone from nothing so far so now having a fully finished, recorded, edited, mixed, mastered song. Where do we go from here? Well, that's where we go to a distributor. So if you want to get your songs out for free, then you can just put it up on places like YouTube and uh, SoundCloud, Bandcamp, you know, places like that. It's free to be able to get your music onto these different websites and stuff, and that is not a problem. However, there are people that would like to make money off of their music as well as being able to uh, have their music up on the most popular places to be. So we're talking about places like SoundCloud. Uh, sorry, we're talking about places like Spotify. Apple Music, Deezer, Tidal, 
um, YouTube music, Amazon music. So there's all sorts of different places that you don't have easy access to when you're in the distribution process and that's why you'll go to a distributor. Now there are many, many distributors out there these days. Some of the examples are people like SpinUp, CD Baby, DistroKid, Amuse, TuneCore, and a few, bunch of others. Trust me, there's so many others. Um, me personally, I have experience with all of the ones that I've just named. But my personal preference is Amuse, but I am starting to let DistroKid grow on me a little bit. Now, all of these distributors will have different rules and different pricing strategies about how to get your music up with them, as well as different services that they can offer. So for example, with Amuse, they have a free level that allows you to upload 12 songs in a year. But then if you want to upload stuff more, like more than just 12 songs in a year, or if you want to upload songs within a two week release window, rather than having to wait to allocate four weeks on the free plan, then you can play, then you can pay for a pro plan instead. And there's a bunch of other benefits that comes with it as well. Like for example, they allow you to distribute to more places like Instagram and TikTok. Um, whereas on the free one, you don't really get to get on Instagram and TikTok like that. Um, and I think the yearly fee for that is like $100 or something like that. So, um, that is the news. But then with DistroKid, DistroKid, you have to pay a fee of like 20, no, 30 pounds, I think it is for a year. And then you can upload as many songs as you want um, through DistroKid. Um, and they've got a whole bunch, like a huge suite of tools to help you as well. Like um, they can help you get your songs mixed and mastered. They can help um, connect you with um, uh, things for like social media promotion. They've got some other promo stuff in there as well um, to help you get your song out. There's basically a lot that DistroKid can do for you and help you surrounding the release of your song in addition to the fact that they can distribute it to all these different stores. Um, so once you give it to the distributor, they will then get the songs out on all the different platforms. You do have to pass certain criteria to get the song uploaded. So for example, you have to have artwork and your artwork needs to be 3000 pixels by 3000 pixels in a perfect square. Um, the text that you have on the artwork, it ideally shouldn't be blurry. It should only be the song title and the name of the artist. If it's anything different, then you have to get that re uploaded. The songs that you upload, it needs to basically sound like one song rather than a mix of songs. If it's a mix of songs, then the scores don't allow for it. It's a whole bunch of different criteria and hoops that you've got to jump through. But once you've done that, you're clear to go on the release. Now, I personally recently learned that it is beneficial for you to release a song at least 45 days in advance. So we're talking about about a month and a half um, that you want to get a song out. The reason that you want to do that is for the next step, which is the promotions that you do in the run-up to the release so you could just end the video here as an as i i told you guys about getting from nothing to your song on spotify so if you wanted to you can end the video here but you want to make sure that once your song is 